Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, I am going to respond to one of the comments where you choose the channel. Thank you for submitting your comments and suggestions on that particular video. I so appreciate it and I'm working my way through it. Today, we're going to talk to Beth Chapman in the afterlife. Now, she is someone that passed in 2019. She was married to, um, let's see, what did she say his name was? Dog the Bounty Hunter. That's his wife. Uh, I know that she died of cancer, at least I think she did. I think I remember hearing that. And I've had two people recommend or request to this person, at least two. Um, one that I'm going to be reading questions for. Somebody didn't submit questions, but the other person did. This is brought to you by Laura from Tacoma, Washington. I have actually been there. I've been to Washington State. It's been a long time, but I've been there a few times and um, flew into SeaTac. So totally know what that area is like. So, all right. Thank you so much, Laura. And I'm going to also apologize for the crappy lighting. Uh, the lighting's not the best here, but I got to work when I can and I'm pretty inspired to do that. I actually have my laptop in front of me right now because I'm going to read the questions from Laura. All right, so I'm going to ask for Beth to come in. I did feel her earlier um, yesterday and I wanted to channel with her, but it just didn't work out. There's too much kid commotion and she totally gets that. She loves that. She likes the kids energy, especially boys. And then she was laughing with me a little bit about teenage girls because I have a teenage daughter who's in college, but she said, even though they get bigger, they just get to be bigger babies, she said. <laughs> so Beth said, they can just get to be bigger babies when they get older. That's what she said. She has kind of this voice a little bit and she's like straight shooter and straightforward and I like her. Like I could have a drink with her. She seems like the a kind of woman that would drink tequila, not Chardonnay. So like she seems kind of strong. So I respect that, I respect that. So Beth, come on in and get real close energetically. <laughs> and she says, I love your hair, Bridget. I just love your hair. I love the color of your hair. It's just, that's just uh, so great. How do you it just get it to do that and all that? Wow, I just love the color of your hair, she says to me. All right, I'm like, thank you. Um, so Laura asks a few questions. She's a, she's a fan and she would like to, to ask you a few questions. Um, so let's just get started with that. How was your crossing? Was it what you thought it would be? She says, um, she has like this black leather vest thing on and it feels like she wore a lot of black leather stuff like and I don't know if it's like fringes like a jacket with fringes or something but it looks like then there's also like this vest so I don't know what that means you guys can tell me fill in if you're a fan that's what she looks like and um, interesting she doesn't have dark pink lipstick on she has light pink almost like a nude lipstick on interesting but it's a little more pinky I don't know why that's a big deal but I'm noticing that um, and she has a scent, like a fragrance, like I, like almost like she's one of those people that goes into the bath and body lotion places and wears like the layers, like the shampoo that has the scent, the lotion and that kind of thing, like the body spray, like she just smells, has the scent about her and stuff. And there's something really special about a flower that's really big and almost looks like a lily. It's really big. It like reminds me of the flowers in Hawaii from that make the lays. Um, really big and really scented, like it's a, a fragrant, a deep flowery scent, but then there's also a little bit of like a, a salty or spicy scent to that too. So it's kind of a little bit of a mixture, almost like a um, musky scent combined with that. So whatever that is, there you go. And um, it fits her, it's strong. It's a strong, strong woman scent. And so, okay, so the question is, how was your crossing? It wasn't what you thought. She kind of rubs her thighs a little bit and she says, you know, and then she kind of crosses her leg and puts one leg over the top of the other where like her knees here and her ankle kind of sits here in a boot. She's got this boot on and then it's got this he little heel on it, but it's kind of a wider heel. Um, and she says, yeah, she's got black boots on. That's what she has. And she says, um, you know, I had cancer and I knew it was, and she's saying like inoperable or something like that. I mean, she's making me feel like she had it and then it went away or she lived with it for a while and then like a remission thing like a five-year remission thing and then it came back kind of thing and she said it wasn't operable it wasn't wasn't um and she's making me feel like she chose her death like i chose the way things would end she said i didn't want to be sick the last months of my life i didn't know how long it was going to be i just knew eventually it was going to take me over and i wasn't gonna i wasn't gonna let it wreck what i had for the rest of my life 
I didn't want to be in a bad mood. I didn't want to be not myself. And then she's saying like, I didn't want to be like, I didn't want to like lose control of my, like she's saying, <laughs> I don't know if she's really gruff, you guys. Uh, I don't want to swear on YouTube, but she's saying, I didn't want to like lose control of like my body. And uh, um, I wanted to have my dignity. Like she's like, I didn't want to wear diapers and that kind of thing. Like I didn't want to be um, just a shell of a person. And you know, like not, like I don't mean to be, you know, I don't mean any disrespect. She said, I had a lot of faith. I have a lot of faith in God. I had a lot of faith in God and uh, prayed for a miracle. I thought, um, for my family's sake, she's making me feel like for her family's sake, she really tried not to give up, not even until the very, very, very end. That, and she's showing me crying like she's really sad to leave, like she didn't want to leave. Not that anybody does, but she's saying she was really sad. It was sad for her. It, it was sad for her because she knew um, that that her family was hurting and it was hard to leave her family is what she's telling me. But she's saying there's angels, there's angels. Tell them, tell them that there's angels. Tell them that there's angels. Um, she says, I believed in Archangel Michael and he was right there with me. And she's showing me like a cross, like a, a wearing a cross necklace. And I don't know if it's her or her husband, but there's like this cross necklace and, and this like, you know, feeling of faith in God. And she said, I'm not angry at God. I'm not angry. She said, I had times when I was angry. I had times when I was angry, but I worked through that. I worked through that. And she said, there was a lot of mercy. It's a lot of mercy that comes and she says you get real humble and you appreciate so much and it's when you realize that the time is running out she says the clock is ticking and she says but I kept it if she's making me feel like they kept it to themselves a little bit like they didn't tell everybody how bad it was and she kept working and kept doing things that like even filming I don't know if she was actually on the, a series with her husband if it was just him or her I don't know you guys I don't know that family I don't know I don't watch that I don't know and she's making me feel like they kind of kept it to themselves so that the fans and stuff wouldn't know necessarily until they had to tell them and then she's making me feel like it was about three months that she went that she went downhill you know that she was able to do everything and then all of a sudden she couldn't and she's saying something about one side of her body is more swollen than the other or like her foot or leg or something super super swollen like one of them more than another like really swollen so i don't know if that had something to do like if it's a lymph node kind of cancer or something but there's just really swollen it looks like the right side i might be seeing it the opposite so it could be your left but um because sometimes i see it in the mirror i don't know and it, but it's really swollen and uh She's talking about her family though, like it was so sad to leave her kids. She said, to leave my family. And she said, I knew Doug would be okay. She said, I knew he'd be okay. She says, daddy or pop or something like that. Like they call him something else besides Doug. They call him something else or dog. Oh, dog, his name's dog. Okay, man, maybe that's why right. she, I just, I'm looking at that going, wait, Doug, dog. Um, he, she said he, she knew that he would be okay, but it was hard to leave him. And she she knew that he would be okay because the kids would make sure of it. And she knew that God was with him. And she's showing this energy of grace, just grace, so much graceful energy, graceful energy. And, and she says like, mercy on me and grace, just a lot of graceful energy, graceful energy. And she's saying like that they were twin flame soulmates. And there's there's a difference between the two of them. The, the twin flame is like one soul exists with the other. so. Even though he is alive and she is in the afterlife, her spirit is part of his spirit. And so he will always feel her. And it doesn't feel like, it feels like if he moves on, it won't be the same kind of connection. He might not get married again. He might date again, or he might have another business partner kind of a thing, I feel like. But I don't, it'd be a really long time probably 10, 15 years, you guys, a really long time. Um, again, I don't know a lot of details about them, just what she's saying, she's saying here. Um, so was your crossing what you thought? And she's just saying, it's re it was really sad for me. It was really hard to leave, but she says, angels, angels. And then she said, Archangel Michael was with her. And so when it's time you go, you just go. And she says, then, then when you step into that, reality of being like she's showing me like being kind of almost like a blue glowing kind of iridescent i don't want to creep anybody out but that's what she looks like a blue glowing kind of iridescent not white it's like a little blue kind of black light looking kind of almost ghostly like to be honest that's kind of what it looks like she's like when you step into that reality she says then then there's not the attached you're not attached then 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 all that 
that guilt, she says all that guilt and that sorrow, it just washes over you and there's just mercy and there's just grace and there's just mercy, 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 have mercy on my soul, she says. I felt a lot of, um, toward the end of my life, I felt a lot of, of, she's making me feel like not remorse or regret, something in between remorse and regret where like she's making me feel like she thought of her life and she thought, I could have done better. I could have done better. I had I, I made mistakes. It's natural to make mistakes. I know that. I, I, I'm not going to be judged for my mistakes, but by God, because that's not that's not how it's going to be an all loving God. She's very very spiritual, very connected to God, very believes in God, very faithful. She's very faith oriented. Let's say that, okay, you guys. And I feel like there's a connection to Pele the goddess Pele, which is the volcano goddess in Hawaii. And I know they live in Hawaii. I know that, I know that, I know that for a fact. I think, well, I shouldn't say I know it for a fact. I think they do. <laughs> I think I know that. It's hard when I'm in an altered state to recall the facts. I'd have to look it up. But um, she's connected to that. And that's a fiery energy, strong woman energy, but also a clearing energy. And She said, I don't know, I wasn't afraid to die, but I didn't want to leave my family, is what she's saying, I didn't want to leave my family. I don't want to leave. I didn't want to leave. So here's another question for you, Beth Chapman, in the afterlife. Did you have a life review that involved all the people you helped with Dog on and the TV show? Ah, oh, that's interesting. Did you have a life review? She says, in, in segments, a little bit. She said, a little bit. You know, I don't really remember all that much about it. A little bit. I started having visitations. She said, I had a grandmother in heaven that started to come visit me. And I'd have, I'd have uh, memories of her and uh, rekindling a relationship with her. And so she may have been one of my spirit guides. I don't know what you call that, she says. But um, to help me get uh, acclimated. Now I know that she was one that helped me get comfortable with the idea of spirit but I didn't know that at the time. So I'd have dreams of her and, and visions of her. And it was comforting, it was a little creepy, a little creepy, the ghost thing, a little creepy. But uh, I, again, I'm gonna say that I wasn't, I wasn't scared to die. I think people misunderstand that. I think people might hear stories, you know, the TMZ stuff and, and think that I was scared to die. I was not scared to die. I was not scared to die. I didn't wanna leave my family. I had a really good life. I had a really good run. I didn't want it to be done. I, like, I wasn't ready for it to be done, but you know, God called me home. And that's that. That's what she says. Okay, is the afterlife, so you didn't do a specifically a life review with people from the show? No, no, she says, no, nope. not that I remember. Um, is, the light, is the afterlife what you thought it would be? And if so, how? And if not, how? That's a good question, Laura, good question. Is it what you thought it would be? Yeah, you know, I thought it would be different. It's a lot easier than I thought it would be. But I didn't realize that I'd have a choice to visit, you know, to, you have choices. You have a lot of choices to, um, to be with your family. Like I'm still with my family. And some of them will tell you that they've seen me or been with me or felt my energy. And that's true. And I didn't realize that I thought it would be all or nothing. Like you die and you're just done and you just let everybody go and like, oh, like your memory's like wiped clean or something, you know, like a men in black kind of show or something like that. <laughs> she says, it's not like that. You still are connected, you know? And uh, especially with dog, dog and I. She's showing me an actual dog, you guys, like a big dog and then a little dog, the big dog and the little dog and almost like a boxer looking, maybe even a pit bull type dog that is very aware of her energy and helping to heal grief. I don't know if this was her dog. There's a big dog and a little dog, you guys. Big dog, little dog. There's definitely a contrast in either the type of dog that they are, the age of dog that they are, or the actual physical bodies, like small dog, big dog. And she's making me feel like one of the dog's job is to help dog, the bounty hunter, with his grief. And that she's very healing, she's very healing. And that that dog knows when Beth is around, knows when Beth is around. She said, I can't believe he got out of bed. She said, I can't believe he got out of bed. You know, I can't, I can't believe it. She said, I'm so proud of him. He's such a strong man. He's a stronger man than I, a better person than I, I was. If, it, if the situation would have been reversed, I don't know if I could do it, I'd be gone. 
I'd be gone. Are you worried about that? Are you worried about him leaving or transitioning? He has to make his own choices. I hope not. I hope he stays for the kids. I think he knows that I would want that. Somebody to be around for the kids, for the family, for the, you know, for the life we built. Somebody needs to enjoy that life. He, he, he deserves to, to live fully. I, I want him to live fully. So the situation was different. I, I, I don't know that I could do it. You know, he's the stronger one of us. You know, but don't tell him I said that. She said, don't tell him I said that. So is the afterlife different then? Well, you already answered that, I guess. All right. Um, what words of encouragement would you give all now that you are on the other side and have access to God and all information possible? Oh, that's a good, Laura, geez, you're good at this. All right, so Beth. What advice would you give now that you have access to all this information? She kind of laughs. She says, it's a bit of a misperception that I have access to all the information. You see, um, she says, when I'm talking to you in a human way as a person, it's different than when I am not with body. She says, when I'm out of my body, when I'm out of my, um, how does she say it? She says, when I'm not in body and she says, I showed this way so you can see me and explain and so people can express, they can understand that it's me. She says, you, you know this, you know this, you're, you're, used, you're used to this, you're used to this, but the people that are watching, the viewers are maybe not gonna know this and they're not gonna believe you, they're gonna think you're a crazy lady. And that's okay. <laughs> she says, um, she says, that's okay, I think you got guts. She uses a different term, but I'm not gonna share that. And uh, thanks, thanks Beth. Hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, very much. All right. <laughs> so what words of encouragement? And she's like, when you're in, when you're just spirit, there's not, there's no need for speaking. There's no need for words. There's no need for explaining anything. Everything is just, you don't need to know because you just know. You know, it doesn't, it's hard to make sense, but to make sense of it, but it's just like a feeling and a being and a not, there's not this need for any kind of human context to it, no need for human words or understanding. So it's really, I, I can't say that. I can't share all the wisdom of the universe. Everybody has that access, you gotta tap it. You gotta tap it. So can we tap it? Do you know that? Can you give us some advice to that? She said, it's all about your, what you believe. It's, it's all, you really, you are limited by what you believe. So think about things in terms of that. And the more you can love and be compassionate to others and, and fully be present, the happier you are gonna be, and the more fulfilled your spirit will be more able to reach you. You know, you might actually pay more attention, and because of that, you might be able to gain some greater access to the deeper wisdom that you seek. But the truth is, you don't really want to know the bigger stuff, because you're too, busy living the stuff, you know, living the day-to-day -day life. You, you don't really want to know the secrets of the universe. And I don't think any of us could actually tell you that. It's, it's not our job to really do that. That's not really, I don't even know if that's really allowed, she kind of says. So. And so she says, Bridget's limited by her beliefs too. You are right, that's true. You guys know that, you guys know that, especially if you watch my other videos like my Bob Marley one. My Bob Marley video, you know, I'm limited by my limited beliefs too. I got that too, I'm a human, right? Ooh, did you guys hear that? That's creepy. Oh my God, I hope that showed up on microphone. Something just like cracked. It sounded like somebody just hit the, oh my God. It sounded like somebody just, did you do that? She kind of laughed, she goes, did I get you? <laughs> you scared the crap out of me. I have a, I'm in my kitchen. I have a stainless steel refrigerator. It's not like somebody threw like a little rock or something at the, the refrigerator, like cracked or something or popped. I don't know if it's just cold in here. Oh my God. She's like, don't make excuses. Limiting beliefs. Oh my God. Okay, that was off. I gotta cap, I gotta collect myself for a minute. Holy crap, okay, that was interesting. All right, one more question, one more question. <clears throat> you guys, did you hear that? I wonder if that showed up on the video. Okay, so I'm recording this video on December 31st, 2019 at 
Right now it's 7.50 p.m. Central Standard Time. I don't know if that means anything to her. Would have been like 7.45 when that happened. All right, so. Oh good, there's only like two questions left. Do you have any messages for your family? Um, that feels private. She says, they know, they know that I love them. They know that I love them, she says. Be strong, they know that I love them, is all she says, okay? And I'm gonna respect that. And the last question is, what was the reason for passing the way you did, for dying the way you did? She says, I fought it, I fought it. She said, as long as I could. I tried to stay as long as I could, she said. It's interesting though, because she shows me like not fighting it, like not going through more therapies or more things or whatever to have the best quality of life she could. But then at the end, she fought as long as she could to stay as healthy as she could for as long as she could for her family is what it makes me, she makes me feel like. She does feel a little bit defeated about the day that she died. And I'm not sure if there's a special date that she was trying to get to, like a birthday, an anniversary or something, or if she died on like an anniversary or birthday of her, one of her friends or family, or that would be a hard time for her. Like she, it's like she was trying to hold out. And it almost feels to me like you guys that Beth died a little too late. Like she should have died a little bit earlier, but she really hung on and that that's what it feels like to me. And so if you're a fan and you know when she died and what the, what the, if there's a, like a, an anniversary or something important, like a, a time where it would have mattered the timing of her death around this time, put that in the comments below because I don't know what that is. And I'm not really good with translating the calendar stuff with the spiritual stuff because I myself, I'm not good with the time. Is that a good way to explain it? She kind of laughed. She said, <laughs> we all have, we all, she says, we're all bad at something. It's fine. You know, it's fine. Well, Beth, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. It was nice to meet you, a strong woman. It was nice to meet you. I, I enjoyed this, you guys. Even though, like, I, I'm not really a fan. Like, I don't know the show or anything. I should probably Google and look it up. But um, thank you so much. For, and thank you to Laura. Laura from uh, Tacoma, Washington. Thank you so much for commenting and sending in the questions for our channeling session with Beth Chapman. So for the rest of you, I hope that this conversation has inspired your spirit. I hope it's filled you up with some hope. I know it's given you some insights. Remember, the purpose here at Above Life Channel for all of these sessions is to encourage you to live your life. Because after all, this is your life. It's your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.